Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and you're on Lighting Answers. This is the show where we talk about all the new forms of energy efficient lighting, usually LED lighting. We do some reviews for you. We give you lighting design tips for your home and we tie everything together with home automation, the internet of things, whatever buzzword you want to talk about or say that's been in the news lately. And uh, as we've been talking about um, recently, we've got some really amazing announcements coming up this summer. And I'm reviewing a product that I've had um, actually almost two years now and you may say well why are you reviewing it you know the product actually came out about four years ago now you may say what am i even reviewing what am i talking about well i'm talking about this guy right here the nest learning thermostat now it came out at the right at the end of 2011 and it was it was really amazing but it was kind of controversial in a way because it was expensive people thought 250 bucks for a thermostat are you out of your mind well you know granted it has a number of cool features. It has the kind of, it harkens back to, uh, it's turned off so we don't have the noise from the, um, the AC system right now, so it doesn't display much. But uh, it harkens back to the old Honeywell thermostats that you, you just turn the dial and that would allow you to, you know, change the temperature and, you know, you had some very basic controls. And it was one of the first devices, if not the first uh, device, with a round screen. People thought that was a little strange as well. How can you actually get an interface on a round screen? But anyways, it's a pretty cool device. It is a bit expensive. And over the time that it came out, other companies, specifically Honeywell, have, well, they have tried to, Honeywell's tried to sue Nest. And uh, Honeywell and other companies um, have come out with other thermostats. Honeywell has um, their Lyric. There's the Ecobee. There's a handful of other ones. And Let's just say the Nest was not the first Wi-Fi controllable or let's just say remotely controllable thermostat. They've been around. Insteon has been able to uh, talk to them, Z-Wave and other home technologies. And of course, the high-end home automation market is uh, something that's had this technology for a while. One of the features that the Nest thermostat is best known for, and it may be the first thermostat that actually had this feature, is a motion sensor, which some people thought, well, that's weird. Why would you do that? But my Nest is mounted over there, which means that with its motion sensor, and it's got a pretty wide range, it's like 150 degrees or more of range. So if I walk past it, it will turn on and of course you know i do go back and forth between you know the bedroom the bathroom closet whatnot and the main room here so you're thinking all right it'll turn on the display that's pretty cool and uh you know you, of course you can adjust it with the ring and you know and so forth and maybe it acts as a night light of some strange reason um but it tells you at least what it's doing when you walk by but it also figures out whether you're home or not now it does have some learning stuff built in as it is called the learning thermostat but um, it can pose um, some challenges sometimes so what if I decide to watch a movie or um, binge watch some Netflix all afternoon long all right well that is actually a scenario that actually happens on a regular basis it happened at my other place and it happens at this place why because well if we you know you just saw the reverse angle but yeah the couch is directly in front of me so if i'm sitting on the couch there's no way and i'm just moving around a little bit the actual sensor you know the the field of view is literally just not going to catch the couch now you might say well bring your couch forward or whatever well the place is already designed and it's already set and depending most people thermostats are not exactly like light switches most people don't think well my thermostat's in the wrong place i'll just move it it's not a task that you want it's got multiple wires and all this stuff so that's one of the best features but it is a feature that many people actually turn off um, myself included the the um the auto detect of away is for me pretty much turned off now of course i've i've gotten around that because i've integrated nest with the rest of my home automation system so when i actually leave my place or i actually set it manually to away the system that is it triggers the nest and it says you're away now of course uh, that gets more complicated when you're, you know, when you've got a family, when you've got multiple people living in one place. Uh, if you leave the Nest automation on, that'll help you out. If you turn it off, well, you've got 
more challenges and we can go into that in a, a different episode a couple other things that the nest has obviously yeah it's got some good looks you know if, if looks are your thing the one that i have is the latest one it came out in q3 of 2013 obviously the first one came out in 2011 it was a bit thicker not that thick but um, the current one is is reasonably thick and part of why i'm talking about this is because with all the stuff coming up this summer we think that nest is going to do something big Maybe a new version of it, maybe a whole new product. They, they acquired Dropcam last year and they are owned by Google, so they got plenty of cash. So we think something big is gonna be happening. So if you wanna get into Nest, you may wanna actually wait just a little bit longer. Uh, we're not gonna talk about the smoke detector or the drop cams or anything else. We're just gonna focus on the thermostat. One other uh, notable feature it has, uh, well, a few other ones, uh, one main feature is something called Airwave. The device actually figures out, um, it really um, only pertains uh, in general, I think it pertains sometimes to heating, but generally to air conditioning because when your air conditioning compressor turns off, the coils are actually still pretty cold. So the Nest figures out how long it can keep blowing air over your coils to keep cold air circulating until basically it's gonna get, it's gonna try to wring the most amount of um, cold um, freon out of those coils as possible and get that cold air. So it's gonna run the fan and then basically it's gonna go ahead and stop that. It'll learn that process, um, learn, it'll work on that process and learn that over the first um, you know week or two after you put the unit in or if you move it to a new location mine had to relearn all the behavior of the new smaller place and the new you know higher efficiency unit uh, when I moved here you know uh, soon to be about a year ago uh, a few other features it has they invented a way to pull power from the existing wiring the actual existing 24 volt um, individual sets of wires and we'll show you that here um, in kind of a close-up they've got some really cool stuff on their website you can go in and say I have these wires and it'll tell you if your existing system is compatible with nest and it's a pretty darn easy install because they've just got these little push uh, buttons that you just push it you insert the wire the actual little mounting base comes with a level um, They actually include um, you know type, multiple types of screws It's a pretty nifty installation kit and, and it was pretty advanced, but you might say 250 bucks. Okay, it's got all these features. They have a number of other features as well It's got you know humidity detection, you know figures out um you know, it knows because it's internet connected, so it knows the weather. It can tell you on a you know monthly basis. It gives you a report saying, well, you used you know more energy or less. How does it compare to some of the other competition? Well, a lot of people have said, all I want is a remotely controllable thermostat. I want to take out my smartphone. I want to get out my watch and say, hey Siri or OK Google and change the temperature. That's all great. If that's all you want, you can probably get away with one of the competitors. Which one should you buy? I can't say because I haven't tested them all, but we will be working on that. One thing that Nest did accomplish was by introducing a Wi-Fi connected, a not a touch screen, but a color LCD, really kind of whiz bang interface. It reinvigorated the thermostat industry. Most of which most people would think, well, that's about the most boring type of device you can buy, which the old ones, sure, were the, the dial, you would spin it, very analog. The newer ones, programmable, but you know you need to read the book 10 times to figure it out, pressing all the different buttons. This one, the whole claim to fame of Nest is you put it in, you keep changing the temperature on it to your liking every day for a week, it learns your preferences, and you forget about it. In real life, most users have reported that that doesn't always work. And you generally, um, a lot of times, go in and set things manually. You can set your schedule manually and so forth. That's how I have it, and I have my overrides because it's tied into the system. But what it did was wake up the other manufacturers and wake up even other startups to say, we can build something that's better and cheaper or on par with Nest. The industry continues to reinvent itself. And speaking of that, this summer, because um, Google, Google is about to have their I.O. conference at the end of May, followed, of course, by Apple. It's just con it's tech company conference time here. So that's the end of this. It's a quick review. Do I say buy it, try it, don't buy it? I say try it, but I say wait. Wait for the next greatest thing. 
because they're probably working on it uh, or have been and they're ready to release it. Your questions are what drives our Q&A episodes, so send them in along with your feedback or maybe even a product you might like us to review. Subscribe to Lighting Answers on YouTube and get every single one of our episodes right when they come out. If you enjoy our episodes, please think about becoming a supporter of Lighting Answers through Patreon or right here on YouTube. Every little bit helps make the show even better and brighter. Thank you for your support. I'm Jody Ganzik for Lighting Answers. It's going to be an amazing summer. I'll talk to you next time.